Hey guys, it's Chelsea Messenger with Picks and Parlays. It is bowl season. We're breaking down the Outback Bowl between Ole Miss and Indiana. So 2020 is almost over, thank goodness. And we've got a promo code to celebrate. The code is 2021 for 20% off the entire site at picksandparlays.net. Indiana comes in minus eight. The total is 65 and a half. Ole Miss is four and five straight up and against the number, while Indiana six and one. But undefeated against the spread, a really good team to bet on this season as they enter 7-0 and against the number. We've got Sean Higgs joining us to break this one all down for us. Sean, we were talking about this before the show. Uh, we're filming this uh, a few days in advance, and uh, we're seeing that Ole Miss might have some COVID problems, some opt-outs. So uh, just a little prerequisite to all of this. Keep your eye on some of those opt-outs and the COVID up because in the year 2020, you know, it's something you got to look uh, uh, look at even hours before the game. But we're going to break down this game on the, the X's and O's uh, and just some things you might want to look at. Uh, Sean, what are you looking at when it comes to Ole Miss and Indiana? Yeah, like, um, so I was like, okay, Ole Miss, you're right without your two top wide receivers. I get it. Guys stopped out. But now you throw this wrinkle into it. I was leaning towards the plus eight. I mean, Lane Kiffin show, this offense is pretty good. It actually generated a lot of yardage on the year. Uh, the quarterback threw 27 touchdowns, granted 14 picks, maybe a little high scoring game, but the total again, 69 and a half down to 66, 65 and a half at some spots. Um, but I just don't, even with these two guys out, Indiana eight, I mean, with Tuttle, I mean, 27, 11, 14, six, Whiskey, Maryland. Where's the offense coming from? Even when, uh, they were full strength. They wasn't like an offensive juggernaut. They had a couple big plays to keep them close against Ohio State there. I don't know. I'm taking a four and five SAT team getting eight. Granted, it's not pretty, but I mean, I'm going to weigh that as you're playing SEC versus, you know, the Big Ten. And we've seen some bad squads in the, in the Big Ten this year. And a lot of guys, some guys are not at full strength. Teams are out. How good is this Indiana team? And I got to tell you, midway through, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a little, uh, a Big Ten championship title odds here for these guys because I didn't think Ohio State was going to have enough games played. But, you know, they switched things around. And <laughs> there goes that. But, you know, I, Indiana's a great story. I mean, Allen over there has done a great job this year, six and one, but eight. I'm good. I'm taking Kiffin. I'm The guy's a wacko. I get it. But I think they're going to put up some points. Again, we're doing this on a, a Wednesday afternoon here with, the, you know, New Year's ahead of us. You get 10 guys get COVID or they're opting out because, eh, why am I playing? They see somebody get hurt. You see, like, Ellinger go out. You saw King go out, quarterbacks. Maybe somebody's like, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm going to not play. I grabbed Oklahoma plus three. They're a six-point favorite now, guys opting out. So, you know, you got to watch that, especially days out now. You don't know, especially as these other bowl games go and somebody gets hurt, maybe a, a guy who might have been an NFL prospect, I think other players would be like, ah, screw this, bro. I'm, it's already a right. convoluted year. Definitely something to monitor, especially – um, sometimes you can look at those opt-outs and think they mean more than they do. Cause I think that was the consensus going into the Texas game. You saw how many opt-outs yeah. Texas had and they still blew out Colorado. So sometimes yeah. uh, you, you put it into the, the mix, <laughs> uh, but it's not the whole handicap. So just something to look out for. I think in this one, it's going to depend on which Ole Miss offense that we're going to see, because at times this Ole Miss yeah. offense has been really prolific really solid and putting up a lot of points on really good teams. Uh, if you remember that Alabama game, but they can be really, really, really bad too. Uh, Matt Corral uh, has been good at times, but he also threw five interceptions in the first half against LSU uh, in their last game out. So I think it depends on which Ole Miss team you think shows up. And also on the flip side, this Indiana defense has been really good, uh, allowing 11 points or less in, in three of their last four games. So those two going head-to-head, -head, this really dynamic offense uh, against this defense, it's been particularly stout. Uh, it should be a good matchup there. I feel like I would lean towards the under here just because it is so high. And I'm not sure uh, how many points Indiana is going to put up because Ole Miss definitely has the potential to put up a ton of points. But they're going against a, a better defense here. And I'm not too sure what we can expect from this Indiana offense that Jack Tuttle has been good, but he only threw for 130 yards against Wisconsin. So it's not like he was, you know, um, throwing yeah. the lights out and throwing yeah. dimes all over the place. So uh, just some things to look at. Anything else you're monitoring when it comes to the Outback Bowl? Uh, nothing. But now, especially these smaller bowls, you got to look at opt-outs because they're not the huge marquee games. People, you're not paying attention to them. Crazy things happen. So, yeah, watch – 
you just got to watch that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, it's just been a crazy year we're wrapping up and it just gets crazier by the day in December with these opt outs. So, and, and COVID issues. I mean, we, we're talking about the other bowl game totally canceled, like a couple of days before, ah, no more TCU games canceled. Like, right. It's crazy. Well, and also <laughs> you can look at the opt outs and if they matter to that game, because obviously some positions are more important than others. Uh, because I remember with Texas, it was a lot of their secondary, but Colorado wasn't especially good at throwing the ball. So it didn't matter quite as much. And plus depth. If you think a team has a lot of depth going into a bowl game, that's definitely a good thing. You saw a Texas backup quarterback. Man, he looked good. Uh, but getting a little off subject here. So we're going to wrap it up for the Outback Bowl talk here on Fix and Parlays. Great stuff from Sean Higgs. As always, Sean, thanks for joining us.